back with a fun video today for you guys. I've never done this before and I was kind of inspired by the get to know me tag, but I couldn't seem to find a consistent set of questions. And so I kind of really kind of made this up on my own. This is a combination of questions that either you guys have asked me or um, ones that I found online. Like um, if you search get to know me questions, it comes up with all these different places and different different places that have posted things that you could do if you want to find out more about your friends or whatever. So that is kind of a combination of all these things. So starting with the questions that you guys have asked me, the first one is, what is my testimony? And I'm actually going to do that in a separate video. I think this will probably come before that video. Another question I got was, do you and your husband want more children? So that's the first time anybody's ever asked me that one. It's not that I don't want more children. I, I'm at the age now where I feel like I'm too young to be done having children, but I'm also at the point where I'm kind of getting older um, and I really would have probably would have had more kids if I was going to. I would have already done it by now. Um, so that's kind of the stage we're at. I don't want to say no 100%. And of course, if God chooses to bless us with any more, then that would be really exciting. But I'm not actively trying to have any more. I just turned 36. So I'm getting to the point now where um, I would be getting more and more high risk the longer I wait. I've already had two C-sections and I've got some health problems that I think would also be complicated. Uh, that would also complicate a pregnancy and also my health while I was pregnant. So I'm not really sure that it would be a safe thing to do at this point and that's kind of sad. Um, but I'm also not at the point where I would want to make any permanent decisions to keep me from having children if that makes sense. Um, so it's basically in God's hand at this point and I'm not going to actively try to have any kids but if God wants us to have any more then we will. Uh, another question I got was how do you and your husband handle finances, savings, and budgeting? I am the one that's in charge of all that stuff. And it's funny because I've mentioned this before about other things. I think I was talking about packing, how I would never let my husband pack for me without checking what he did. It's kind of the same thing with this. I handle all the finances and he doesn't really have anything to do with it at all. The control freak in me would hate that. I would have to know what he, what he was doing with the money, where it was going, and how much we had in the bank account on any given day, and how much we had on our credit card. And I would have to know all that stuff, and he doesn't ask. So I'm guessing he doesn't ask because he trusts me. Um, so I'm the one that takes care of all that. It's pretty simple. There's no big thing, no program that we use or anything like that. It's just me. I take care of all that stuff. Um, somebody else asked me, do you like doing crafts with your children? Yes, I do, but I'm also, again, being a control freak, I don't like messes. So it's very hard for me sometimes to just let them make something and not be like, oh, put this over there and pick that up and you're dropping glue or you spilled glitter all over, you know. So I'm probably not the most fun person to do crafts with, but I do try to do things for them and I, I plan special things for them. Especially in homeschool, I'll plan like unit studies that usually center around holidays and we make different crafts and they do different things. Um, and so, yes, I do like doing them, but I'm not the best at just kind of letting them do what they want. <laughs> okay, so that's all the questions from you guys. So, generic internet questions that I found. My birthday is June 7th, and am I a morning or a night person? Definitely not a morning person. I am not the nicest person in the morning, and if you wake me up, I probably will be not very friendly. Um, and I am, a night, I am a night owl by nature. I want to stay up late, but I've had to start going to bed earlier just because for health reasons, I need to go to bed at a decent hour and I can't stay up till two or three anymore like I used to. Um, so I try to go to bed between 11 and 12, 1230-ish, um, but I am definitely not a morning person and if I had my way, I would be just a straight up night owl and stay up all night. Favorite childhood television program? There's a couple that I, different times in my life I remember. I remember loving gummy bears. I loved Mr. Ed, um, pretty much anything that used to come on Nick at night. So it was Mr. Ed, um, Dick Van Dyke, The Lucy Show, uh, Donna Reed. I loved that. I wanted to be just like Mary Stone because she was so cool. Um, and, oh, Captain Caveman. I'm kind of going backwards now. But Captain Caveman I loved. Um, oh, the Snorks. You may remember the Snorks. And then when we got a little bit older, I used to love DuckTales, Rescue Rangers. And they are making a new DuckTales series that I heard about on the Disney Channel and I think it's supposed to actually be drawn cartoons which is nice because a lot of those computer generated ones look really weird so I'm excited about that. Favorite colors are pink and purple. My favorite animals are giraffes and dolphins. Do I have any bad habits? Uh, yes. How much time do you have for me to tell you my bad habits? But I think my kids would say one of my most annoying bad habits is the fact that everything reminds me of a song and so I usually will sing that song. Like if they say something, it reminds me of a song and then I sing it and then I get it stuck in my head and kind of sing it off and on all day long. They hate that. And I'm a terrible pun maker. Like I make the corniest pun jokes and my oldest daughter looks at me like, you're an idiot. 
Um, but I love puns and that's my sense of humor and so I think they would probably say that's my bad habit. I wouldn't really call this a bad habit but one thing I do that's kind of weird is at nighttime before I fall asleep I have to kind of rub my feet against the sheets to fall asleep. It's weird, I don't know why I do it, but that's kind of a weird habit that I have. The next question is my worst personality trait, I would say is that I'm a control freak and I'm bossy, which is a bad combination. Um, I'm kind of used to getting what I want and so I tend to expect that um, all the time. And being a control freak, I always want to be the one that's in charge and kind of telling everybody what to do and it really bothers me when I don't get to do things necessarily the way that I want them done. That bothers me and that's, I guess, my worst two personality traits. My best personality traits, um, I would say that I'm friendly. I am friendly to everyone and I think just overall I'm a good person. I am honest and I would help people that need it um, and I think that's it, just being kind to everybody. And I, I really like to try to make people laugh. So that's always, it makes my day when I can make somebody else laugh. Name one thing you miss about being a kid. I think I just miss the, the lack of responsibility and being at home with my parents and knowing that they were the ones that were in charge, they were the ones that, was gonna, that were gonna take care of me. And I didn't have to worry about that. And I think that's a lot of what people, pretty much most people would say is that had a good childhood was that that carefree time where you didn't have any responsibilities, you didn't have any financial responsibilities, and you just got to be free and happy and lighthearted. That's what I miss. Name one thing you love about being an adult is getting to do pretty much whatever I want. Uh, obviously, I'm not gonna go out and like speed on purpose or knock over a bank, but you know, I like being in control of when I go to bed, and I like being the one that can plan my own vacation and do what I wanna do and not have to ask anybody's permission. I like that. What would be your dream job? Um, I think this is pretty much it. If I could make YouTube a career that I could live off of, then I think I would. And I've said this before so many times, and I'm, you probably, are, if you've watched my videos every week, you're probably sick of hearing me say this, but my YouTube channel really is a labor of love. And if you have a YouTube channel, then you know that you don't do it for the money, especially in the early stages, because there's not any money or very little money. And it took me um, over a year to even make enough to get paid because there's a threshold that you have to meet with AdSense, which is how you get paid on YouTube. There's a threshold you have to meet before they will actually pay you. And it took me over a year to meet that threshold. So I was making all those videos for a year for absolutely free. Um, you know, and that's okay. And I still don't make that much now. But the opportunities that I've had that have come from my YouTube channel and being able to talk to you guys and make relationships and share things with you guys through my videos, that is my dream job. And the fact that yes, I do make a little bit of money off of it now, um, it's probably not worth the time that it actually takes to have my channel, but it's worth it because I love it. And it's just an added bonus. And I really do love it and so I would love for YouTube to become an actual job um, that I could make enough off of, or at least a significant amount to be able to help with the family finances. I would love that. I hope that happens for us, for me one day. I don't know if it ever will, um, but you guys can actually help me with that. If you like my videos, make sure you share them with your friends. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Um, but really sharing me with people in your life, if you have a video of mine that you think's uh, helpful or funny or whatever, make sure you're sharing it with your friends and that will just help me out. But that is really, this is really my dream job that I hope to continue to have and that it will continue to grow so that it becomes more and more of a steady income. What chore do you absolutely hate doing? I would say cleaning the bathtub or ironing. I hate the bathtub because it's hard to get it, it's hard to reach and you're scrubbing. And ironing just because it's annoying. I iron once a week and so it's not too bad, but if I miss a week or I'm a couple days behind, that pile adds up really quickly. And I'm not the type of person that can hang up clothes in the closet wrinkled and iron them as we need them. I like everything to be ironed all at once and hung up in the closet. I just don't like doing it. It's, it's hot and it's annoying and my ironing board squeaks. I don't care how new your ironing board is. I mean, it still squeaks. Why do they all squeak? It's so annoying. But anyway, I think ironing and the tub. What is my least favorite mode of transportation? Well, that's kind of an odd question. But I mean, I've flown in an airplane. You know, I've gone on like small boats, not a cruise ship or anything. Um, I've never been on a train except for the one at Disney World, so that really doesn't count. But I hate little cars, little things that you have to climb out of or climb into, either a little car or a giant like truck. I hate that. I hate having to climb up into a truck or my husband has like a small sports car and I feel like I am climbing out of a rabbit hole every time I get out of his car. It's annoying. 
So I would say little cars or big trucks. What sound, what are some of your favorite sounds? Um, mostly mine stem around things that are around my house. I love the bugs in the summertime. I like to sleep with the windows open and hear the bugs. And I also love the sound of the train. And the train that I hear at this house is the same train that I have grown up hearing every, you know, every night since I was six years old and lived in this area. So that is a comforting sound to me um, anyway, but then especially knowing that it's the same train that I heard growing up pretty much my whole life makes me feel really comfortable. If you could learn to do anything, what would it be? I would say I would really wish that I could dance. A musical instrument would be nice too, but I think it would be so amazing to be able to dance. In my mind, I'm an awesome dancer. I can choreograph routines and I can do all these Fred Astaire type moves, but in reality, I am the most clumsy, backward, clunky dancer and I don't dance in public. The only dancing I ever do is like, you know, when nobody's looking kind of a thing. But God's looking and that's embarrassing because he sees all this stuff and he's probably like, whoa, I wish I could dance. I think that would be really a really fun and amazing form of expression and stress relief and exercise, so that would be awesome. But it would, be, it would also be nice to be able to play um, the piano or the guitar. If you could be any fictional character, who would you choose? If I think of any strong classic fictional character, I always think of Scarlett O'Hara. And I really like her as a kid, Gone with the Wind was one of my favorite movies and I used to have, I had the script and I could tell you all the words and I have the soundtrack and all these different things. Um, and I think she, it wouldn't be fun to live her life because she was, you know, she went through the Civil War and she had all these hardships in her life, but just her as a woman, she was incredibly strong, she was beautiful and uh, she was a survivor and I think that's a great thing to want to be. So I would say Scarlett O'Hara. Which celebrity do you get mistaken for? I don't really get mistaken for her, but I've had several people tell me that I look like Amy Adams. I think it's really just the hair. I don't think I really look like her, um, but the hair with the fair skin, I think that makes people think of her, but that's the only celebrity that I've really heard besides The Little Mermaid. I've heard that a few times, um, which obviously I don't look like her and I can't sing like her, but I have red hair and I've had little kids before at Disney World say that. And then I had a subscriber tell me that their daughter saw me on their watching my one of my YouTube videos and said that I look like Little Mermaid. So, Amy, Amy Adams or Little Mermaid, I'll take it. What is one thing you did growing up that got you into too much trouble? You guys could probably guess it, guess this, and it's talking too much. I was pretty much every school year in trouble for talking, and it didn't help that my maiden name was at the beginning of the alphabet. So, if the if the teacher did the seating chart by alphabetical order, then I was always towards the front and I always got caught, but she would move me and then I would still find somebody else to talk to, so there's really not a lot of places to move me that I would not talk to somebody. Again, going back to being friendly, I just talked all the time. I still talk all the time and I could monologue forever about anything pretty much. So, um, and it kind of goes back to the dream job question. When I was growing up, my brother and I used to play QVC all the time. And if you don't know what that is, it's a home shopping network. The fact that I am on YouTube and quite a few people see my videos over the scan span of time that I've been on YouTube, um, not many because I still have a small channel, but even one person watching my video is embarrassing because I am extremely shy. If you put me in a public speaking course or talking in front of a room of people, I will turn into the most quivery, sniveling little thing you've ever seen but it's different on here. But it's basically because I love to talk and uh, I love to share information. So talking too much was pretty much what I was always getting in trouble for. What story does your family always tell about you? Well, there's a couple. Um, there's the one where I fell in the creek in Gatlinburg, which is so funny. Um, and then the other one is the ironing board story. I was obsessed with horses and I didn't have one and I wanted one, so I was a city girl that wanted a horse and so I would be my own horse. And I had a giant pixie stick that was probably longer than this and I would whip myself with it and run around the backyard like a horse. And then one day I thought it was gonna be a great idea to jump over the ironing board because that was my little horse jump that I set up. So I don't know where my parents were. They were upstairs doing something and so I turned the ironing board upside down so the legs were like this and I'm jumping over this little crossbar. And I went perfectly the first few times and I'm jumping and I'm steeple chasing all over the basement and then I got my foot hung on the bar and I tripped over the ironing board and it's not very sturdy metal so I bent it so basically that whole arm is like and so I didn't know what to do so like a kid I just set the ironing board back up against the wall and waited to see when my parents were going to see the ironing board which was now like decrepit and so instead of telling the truth and telling them that I was jumping over it, I told them that I was riding it. Why did I think that sounded any better than jumping over it? I don't know, but for years, like until recently, I forgot to correct the story that I wasn't really riding it. So they would go tell everybody, oh, Becky was riding the ironing board. No, I wasn't, I was jumping the ironing board, but either way, they love to tell that story. It's so funny. So pretty much everybody that ever meets me will hear that story at one point 
and their knowing me career. And the last question I'm going to answer is, at what age did you become an adult? I'm not really sure that I'm still an adult. Um, I feel like I have grown up in the last couple years a lot. I just turned 36. But you know, you get to that point where you really feel like that you have come into your own in a way. And of course, there's still things I'm unsure about. Um, and I have days when I feel like I know absolutely nothing. But I think a lot of it is spiritual, knowing who I am and having the faith that I do and continuing to grow from that. Um, going through some of the things that I've gone through in my um, later adulthood and being able to come out on the other side and still being a strong person and a Christian. Some of those things that you think will actually kill you or they should actually kill you because they're so hard emotionally, but then they don't. And then you realize how strong you really are, that God helps me to be strong when I need to be. Um, and then that made me feel like I grew up, but still very much I feel like a child. I feel like I shouldn't be as old as I am. And I know when I'm 46, I'm going to look back and think, you were so dumb. Why were you so worried about being 36? But I think it's just because I'm at the point now where I've realized that no matter what I do, I can't slow time down. I cannot make this time stop going so fast. I cannot make every day slow down and being able to have enough time to do all the things I need to do and still be with my family and still have fun time for myself. Um, so, but I think just in the last couple years, and I think a lot of it's been my YouTube channel. I think I've grown up a lot on my YouTube channel because of it and with it and through it um, and the relationships that I've made and the experiences that I've had and learning from you guys. And I think I've learned a lot in the last couple of years. So I really feel like it was probably around the time I was um, 34-ish, 33, 34, that I actually felt like an adult and I can really handle life. I can raise children. I can... Um, improve my life in ways that I want to. I can increase my faith. I can be as strong as I need to be. I think that really has made me grow up in a lot of ways. So that is the answer to that kind of in a nutshell. So I hope you guys like this video and I hope you like the questions that I chose to answer. There were so many that I couldn't answer them all just because there was a lot of fun ones. Um, but I stuck to the ones that were kind of general in a way that kind of gave you a little glimpse of who I am. Um, if you care to know who I am. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you have any other questions and you want to ask me more things about me, then I'll be happy to answer them. So leave them in the comment section below and make sure you subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss any of my videos. I upload every at least once a week on Monday and then usually if I have a homeschooling video, I'll upload that on Wednesdays. But you can always guarantee at least one video a week. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.